translation available for our Spanish speaking participants. Indura Guzman, founder of Community Language Cooperative, has joined us as our interpreter this evening. You may participate in English or in Spanish. If you are fluently bilingual, feel free to keep listening to our original speakers. If you have any issues, please reach out via chat. I will now have Deanna from LCFC provide you with the interpretation direction. Diana. Por favor, haga clic en el icono de interpretación y elija el idioma que prefiere escuchar. Si es bilingüe, puede escuchar en lo, al, los idiomas originales. Por favor, silencie el audio original para que no escuche al intérprete y el orador a la misma vez. Gracias. Welcome everyone to our fourth Latinas Lead virtual leadership ser series. I am Betty. Welcome everyone to our fourth Latinas Lead virtual leadership series. I am Betty Aragon Mitotes, Senior Fellow of Las Mujeres Valientes. Supported by Latinas Lead and Las Mujeres Valientes Fellowship, our fellows are Patricia. Barrera Rivera of Denver, Anna Baez of Aurora Montbello, Dolores De Campo from Fort Morgan, Fran Coleman from Denver, and Berna Hostetter representing the San Luis Valley and myself from Wellington, Colorado. As Betty mentioned, I'm Berna Hostetter, Senior Fellow from the beautiful San Luis Valley in the Southern part of Colorado. I'm a member of Mujeres de Colores. I'm also a member of Project Protect. I have a master's in business administration and I'm currently working for Adams State University. We are very excited to bring you speaker presenter Teresa de Jesus Berlinda Vigil from San Luis, Colorado. Before we present Teresa, mi amiga senior fellow Betty will share a little bit about herself. Hi everyone, as Berna mentioned, my name is Betty Aragon Mitotes, Senior Fellow. I live in Wellington, formerly from Fort Collins. I am the founder of Mujeres de Colores. I am also the co-founder of Museo de las Tres Colonias. I am currently working to erect a monument to honor the beat workers in Fort Collins. I am also producing a short documentary on COVID, its impact on the Latinx community. Now I would like to share a little about Latinas Lead Giving Circle. In 2016, the Latinas Lead Circle was launched by Latino Community Foundation of Colorado to strengthen the leadership development of Latinas so that we can drive social change. It is com community driven and powered by small personal donations. $10,000 is distributed to small organizations that are dedicated to growing the professional and personal leadership of Latinas. Latinas Lead is also host to the annual Latinas Lead Power Summit, which takes place every June. Berna, can you tell us a little bit about the Las Mujeres Valientes program? Sure, Betty, I'd be glad to. Las Mujeres Valiente, or LMV, is inspired by women of wisdom, Latinas that are 50 plus of age. LMV was created to reduce ageism, promote health and well being, create sharing learning environment, and transfer knowledge and wisdom to all the generations of Latinas to thrive. Together, six diverse leaders build across Colorado a culturally responsive way that not only creates a new narrative for aging, but also Latinas of all ages to be more fulfilled in their identities with their families and their individual communities. Our mission is to embrace aging, empower Latinas in Colorado. LMB six senior fellows lead small and large convening, serving on panels, participating in interviews and providing training around their individualized pillar of focus. We now want to get to know the audience. We have two polling questions for you to answer. 
Please mark the answer that best fits you. Great, thank you, Berna. Okay, question number one. What generation do you belong to? Please mark the answer that best suits you. You may begin. Okay, great. Let's see what results we have. Okay, it looks like we've got uh, baby boomers and uh, millennials that are our largest viewers right behind Generation X. Okay, we have one more polling question for you. And the question that we have for you is, where are you located? Once again, please answer the, the please answer it to the, excuse me, please answer it to the best of your ability. You may begin. Okay, it looks like our poll is ready. So it looks like the Denver Boulder metro area is our biggest uh, participants. We would like to thank you all for joining in on the polls. And now what we've been patiently been waiting for, our amazing guest speaker, Teresa Vigil. For the last 35 years, Teresa has been a rural herbal, herbal practitioner who is familiar with natural healing methods, which are traditional to the upper Rio Grande bioregion. Teresa understands the importance of natural remedies to the Hispano residents of the San Luis Valley. Now, please continue to join us as we watch Teresa's Remedio video. Hablado de una tal remedio Me han dicho que tiene las soluciones Good evening, I'm Teresa Vigil from San Luis, Colorado and uh, I've been interested and re-interested in learning about how our ancestors used the wild herbs in our area um, I'm very connected to that and I have been doing this for 35 years and every day I seem to learn something new about the plants that live right in our area, right in the San Luis Valley, how our ancestors used them and they still use them. So I'll be showing you some of the ones that are very basic that people immediately identify with. Uh, we could begin with um, what we call chamizo. And chamizos are in the sage family. We have this one, which is the most popular. It's called uh, chamizo hediondo. Literally mean the stinky one because it's very fragrant. But if you walk on the hill on a rainy day where the chamizo is, it just opens up your sinuses. It's wonderful. It was used for bathing. It was also drunk for colds. Uh, it was used to uh, relieve arthritis, rheumatism, and people dried it and often had it uh, available for winter days or days when they really needed it. This one is the rabbit bush, and it's a beautifully fragrant uh, in a different way but it wasn't used the same way, I also was boiled and drunk. But um, because of uh, uh, the University of Colorado had done a study on these during the war to get rubber out of them, 
I'm not real, ca I'm a little more cautious about drinking this one, but I imagine you could soak in it. We also have, uh, in our area, it's actually considered a not just weed now, but uh, it's called ponzo or tansy. And tansy was used for colds, for infections, um, all kinds of different things. And it uh, was also used uh, on me when I had a very bad blood infection on my leg. And I think it helped uh, cure it and I didn't lose the leg. Uh, tansy also was used as food in the east. Uh, it, the button was used like a mock nutmeg and uh, the leaf was dried and put in a tansy pudding. So, but uh, this, uh, it was a commercial plant at one time, I think. Then we have uh, things in the area like uh, choke cherries or capulin. And we uh, will grow that for uh, different kind of things. A choke cherry was made even into pies, believe it or not. They had to take out all the seed or they had can it and uh, like fruit, fruit soup. And they made jelly with it. But also when you dry it, it made a good cold tea along with some other dried herbs. Uh, in the area where we, the sage grows, you find other plants that were very useful. Uh, this one was called a yucca, and uh, the root was used to wash your hair, to wash the skin, because it had a, uh, uh, an ingredient that helped soften. It was also used to do the blankets. The pioneers had to make weave their blankets, uh, and that was an important thing. It was like the soap that helped. Uh, so that's a yucca, and you see a bayonet, sometimes called bayonet in the Spaniards. Uh, in the same area, you would find wild hops, and this is just a little root, wreath I made, but the little um, flowers that grow are like little lanterns, white, but because we've had no rain, they are not appearing right now. Also, beer was made from this. And uh, one of the plants we had that was widely used was the pinon. Not only did it give us uh, uh, wood for uh, our firewood, and also the little seeds in here are called pinon, and we gather those. It's a good, uh, healthy kind of food if you don't eat too many. They're very high in calorie. And the leaves are often boiled and used for colds, or sometimes they were used for uh, infections. The sap that comes off the pinon tree was made into an ointment called trementina. Very effective on sores, and they used it on the animals too, the horses when they got sores. Uh, but it was also very effective on, on people as far as that goes. We also had, um, as we come down to the lower areas, we have other plants that uh, grow that uh, we widely use. We used um, uh, some of these things here that, like uh, chili, was always used a lot for uh, colds, too. They'd uh, actually steep the, what we call chile caribe, and, and put it in the food so that it they help expel a lot of the mucus. Um, the osha plant is uh, Porus Lovich. Uh, it's in the wild celery family, and we have two varieties in our area. We have what we call osha de la Sierra which is, we call this colita because it's a little tail-like, but this is more effective and stronger, and it's being protected right now in the mountains by our forest divisions. Uh, this one we call Osa del Campo, and the root is very big, and uh, it's widely used here. It dry, they sometimes grind it up, and we'll use it like a tea, 
or sometimes it's boiled and rinse your mouth if you have a toothache. Some people take the fresh root when it's fresh, a little piece, and chew it for a toothache. Uh, but Osha was like the number one uh, herb that I think our ancestors used. And we learned that from uh, actually a bear. And I had, uh, I forgot to show you this, but I paint rocks. Now in the pandemic, I'm painting rocks to keep my sanity. I painted a bear. And the bear is the one that taught the natives. They were watching a bear that was wounded. And he was getting the plant and putting it on his wound. And they, then they saw the bear later, and the bear was doing just fine. They decided not to kill it. And so the bear, the native said, oh, there's something to that. Let's go check it out. And they did. And that's why we learned about Osha. It was this little critter that taught us. And because I, I painted the Osha on the back, <laughs> because I want to remember that our little animals sometimes teach us things. And this morning, I had quite a shock. I kept hearing something upstairs. And I went up to get a book, and there was a bird inside flying around the bedroom. And I, oh my gosh, well, what I do, I open all the windows to air up the house, you know, and the bird must have come in and stayed overnight. I shut the window, but that was so funny. I kept opening the window and he wouldn't go out. <laughs> he wanted to stay in here. I think he saw the plants. But anyway, um, getting back to animals teaching us, uh, our ancestors kind of learned from watching the animals, what they ate, sometimes trial and error. But that's how it happened. We also have uh, in our area other plants like Lately, flax has come into the area, but when I first moved here in the 70s, I didn't see this. You see those little purple flowers all over the highway? We call it linseed. And linseed, they actually make linseed oil, you know, for the furniture. And uh, this is very effective on the inners, <laughs> intestines. Uh, because it's flax, it turns into flax. But one thing about plants, you must learn what to do or what not do about them. Because when they're green, they're poisonous. But when they're dry, they're very effective. They even put it in breads and other things now because of the things that flax can do for you. But it's a beautiful little thing and it seeds, wherever it falls, it grows. So, but this was not relevant to the area like mullein, another plant we didn't uh, talk about. Uh, and also, um, another plant that, uh, that we do with the plants, we either make food, we can make crafting of some kind. And uh, one of the plants I have going in the front is uh, a plant that helps calm the nerves. It's called goldenrod, so it's And uh, it, uh, it, you gather the leaves and you could use it as a tea. It mostly grew up in the mountains where the moist there is. I happened to bring a plant and now I have a lot of, I've actually made jelly out of the blossom, a beautiful jelly. Another thing I did with herbs years ago and still do, I make herbal vinegars and herbal oils. I forgot to tell you about that, but it's also medicinal when you put the herb in. Uh, like I said, we reach for the kitchen plants, which uh, are things I grow in the greenhouse, like lemon balm and rosemary romero. Romero was used a lot by the Hispanics. It came in on the ships to Mexico. And then a lot of the Mediterranean herbs were brought into the area. So everybody guarded their herbs like they were gold, because you didn't get them, but 
Maybe the ships came in every two years, whatever. Uh, but I grow these in my greenhouse. We, I grow a lot of basil, because I do a lot of Italian cooking too. I make a lot of pizza, the rosemary, the basil, the onions, and I use the onion tops. I always cut the onion tops and dry them. And I put them in a jar to add to soups. Onions are very effective for colds. So our ancestors grew a lot of onions. My grandfather right in the yard out here grew a lot of onions. We always had onions in everything. We have a lot of wild uh, herbs too that we eat. One and um, we have one outside. I was, thought we could take a picture if you wanted. But it's uh, called quelite. And the quelite is wild lamb's quarters. It's a wild spinach and very nutritious, higher in vitamins probably than spinach. Uh, because we ate so much of it, my grandmother made us pick and she would dry it right upstairs on a clean sheet. We had to go up to the old pump and wash it, take it up and put it on the sheet. And she'd put a curtain over it and uh, open the windows and it would just dry naturally. And all the seed would fall to the, to the sheet and we saved the seed because I'm a big seed saver. And then we, she would put it in flower sacks and uh, the flower sacks for the winter. And because of the, the, that I remembered that memory, I wrote a story that was published in, in a book uh, about the earth here. And it's called El Quelite. So, but I'm very fascinated with every plant and in my head goes a story all the time. And right now I just finished a story uh, about the, uh, the, another wild berry that we go pick. And uh, so uh, not only does uh, the plant, when I look at it and use it, I think it wakes up a memory of our ancestor. And I honor my grandparents who owned this house. My, this is my Uncle Louis Blanket. He passed away. He was very good to us. The, the people of uh, San Luis that taught me a lot and shared stories. And I honor our Chicanas very much because they have kept this uh, alive, the stories alive. And, and the more I learned, the more I wanted to learn. And uh, I wrote a poem for them and that later uh, in gratitude. I, I knew all the ladies. Juanita told me, uh, I think, about the posadas. We brought us back to the past and the fun uh, of the church and those kind of things. So each lady has taught me something because I knew them all. And I honor them for what they've done. Uh, so we have also so many plants. Um, we've talked about all this, but if we were on the walk, at every level we would have quite a few to talk about. So um, we could do that. Uh, also, uh, one of the things I did with these two, I found out the root is very, um, healthy and there are wild things that uh, there's a cousin of this plant called the marva and, and uh, we have it also in here somewhere and uh, the marva looks like this it has a little tiny purple flower this is the marva here and it's related to this marva uh, marva would be like the botanical name but they're all plants grow where they, they, they like to grow where they get along with another plant. And, and that's how you find them. You would not find an onion in the petunia patch, okay? So they don't get along. They, so all plants know where they belong. If they don't belong there, they die. So that's a key when you're looking for one plant and you're looking for the other, you might find them together. They like to, to be with, uh, you know, with what they were. Um, 
And getting back to Rhodes Mary, actually our people were very keen on using it, but they probably started little, I remember our grandma had little lard pot from the lard, and she had uh, different plants growing that didn't grow. So a lot of times the kitchen window was full of something they didn't have, and people would say, Dame ese retoño, por favor. And they get the little sprig and start it to grow in the window. So women shared a lot of plants. That's why they're here, because they kept them going. Uh, I, for instance, have a bush now from the plant I started in the greenhouse. It's this big, and I share all year long with my friends, uh, Rosemary. I personally use rosemary a lot. I drink a cup of tea every day because I'm 88 years old. And uh, it's a, uh, one English uh, version that I read about. It says, drink a cup of tea a day and your brain will function real good. So I try to believe that, so I drink a cup of tea. But it also cleanses inside. It's very antiseptic. I bathe in it. I do a little facial. It's wonderful. Boy, your sinus and your skin feels good. Um, so, uh, rosemary in my greenhouse is like a must for me. And it sort of reminds me of the, the sages. You know, it has that same fragrance. And um, so, kitchen uh, plants like oregano, it's a must right now, especially in this pandemic. Or oh, that fresh oregano tea. Onions, purple onions have more oils. All these things and, uh, you know, as we age, we need to uh, give immune kind of food into our body. Eat the old things like our ancestors. Chickpeas, garbanzos, they don't even grow them in the valley, but at one time they did the bolita bean, uh, all these things, the herbs, it's important to ha have an uh, immune kind of food in your body right now. We're trying to wash, 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 clean, 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 but what you eat, what you put in your body right now as you're aging especially, it's important because you've got to use foods that help the immune system. And um, so um, some of the plants we didn't talk about, um, I think was this one here. Oh, we talked about sunflower, I believe. Okay, the sunflowers, um, there are so many. There are so many they can't uh, identify, but you know, when I see the big sunflower, that's a sunflower, and that's what I like. I just love the beauty of it. And the seeds were all gathered. All seeds were edible. And uh, they gathered many, many kinds of seeds, the ancestors, and carried pouches. Like we carry carne seca, you know, when you're hungry, a few piñon, whatever. All those things were nourishment. They were actually good foods, but they had no fat, a lot of them. So that's a good thing. We want to avoid too much fat in our body, especially now, and because it stays, you know. And uh, if we're not moving, we're not burning off uh, the foods. So what we eat right now is very important. The queritas are out there. The verdolagas, we found that lower the blood pressure. And uh, I was in Australia about 10 years ago and I went to the market and I did, I, the Vivalanas were this big. They eat them there too. They're Aboriginal people and they have connected with the earth in a big way. They were delicious. They were so big. And I personally like them and people used to compliment their protein with the beans and, and the Vivalanga cook them together. Often many people ate those here. It's a good immune food. Um, another plant uh, that uh, I think we talked about uh, how medicinal this is, 
uh, but it's also sacred to the natives. Um, I've worked with a group of kids uh, in Fort Garland, and uh, we needed a project to do with them. And we made a, a kind of a wreath like this with a chamiso, and they wore them around their ankle. And we had a lot of negative kids. Some of these kids came from inner city, had little problems at times, and they got such a kick out of that. We made them put them around to keep the evil away. And they loved it. All oh, they went around trying to do and then do dance. It was so cute. And um, that kind of thing. And so, you know, a lot of things that we do with the plants connects us to the earth. We must stay connected to the earth. You know, I lived in the Cosmopolitan City for 45, 30 years in San Francisco, California. But I couldn't wait for summer, my young years, my teenage years, to come to San Luis. It was a different world, entirely different, although California is full of everything, plants uh, imaginable. There was something different here. I felt the connection here, and, uh, such a big connection to the earth when I would come. And I was a real free spirit. My grandmother was very good with me and uh, allowed me to be free and I never got in trouble but uh, it, it was like a, a different world that's all I could say when I was here. So after many many years of living some in California and I lived two years in Japan when my husband was in the Navy and our daughter Victoria that did this storyteller she was born in Japan in Yokosuka, Japan. And we and then my second daughter was conceived. We say always kid about it. They were made in Japan. And so uh, when we came to the States, uh, we went right to San Francisco where my dad was and my sisters and brothers. So I would like to just honor my grandparents, my great-grandparents, all those people in my life who have brought me to recognize, to recognize who we are, what, what we are, and to honor every bit of who we are. And I would like to read a poem. Where is the poem? And to our Chicana activists, ladies that I respect, I learned from, I thank you all for the things you've taught me, and I continue to learn. Saludes y bendiciones a las gracias mujeres, que con valor cambian algunas cosas, de la gente, de la agua, y de la tierra. Ahora vamos todos a la sierra con gran efecto, Teresa. Sorry. Let me start this again. Thank you, Teresa, for joining us live. I would like you to share your knowledge of what are some of the preventative measures on how we can help build our immune system in due of COVID-19. Teresa? Well, we spoke a little about the plant, but there are so many plants that what we have to do is tailor what works for our own body. Um, I was going through uh, one of the books that I helped, uh, that I gave the Spanish profile to about colds, coughs. And uh, this gave so many, I was telling KT here that I could do a rap about it. We could also reach to the kitchen cabinet 
for uh, simple kinds of foods that, uh, first of all, uh, you never saw blind rabbit. We need to eat the raw vegetables more during this time, not cooked, because we take all the vitamins out. Uh, the immune system needs uh, awakening. And uh, maybe if I thought I was getting a cold and I didn't have a commercial uh, pill or whatever, I'd reach for oregano. Oregano is excellent for coughs. Boil uh, oregano, you could breathe it, you could do um, a breathing exercise with it. You could reach for thyme, T-H-Y-M-E. You could reach for basil, but the stronger ones I would probably go for is osha. And osha we talked about in the earlier part of the video and uh, I'm pretty sure that almost every household in San Luis would have some type of osha. And um, I think I talked about tincturing, and so I'm able to tincture the osha, which means you can keep it for a longer time and only use a few drops. And um, because I'm not a doctor, but I was a nurse, um, I was able to contribute to this book on some of the Hispanic um, uh, things we talked about. Diet is very important at this time. We have to avoid sugars, uh, flour, white flour. We should be eating more grain, get back to the beans for sure. I think I keep um, every kind of bean in my house and uh, the things that are low in fat. Uh, we also have to be very concerned with cleanliness. And there was a story in the Mercy Spirit uh, magazine, and I'm a Mercy associate, how in Dublin when they had cholera, they were dealing with a terrible, terrible situation. And they say, none of our men died. We washed our uniforms in vinegar every night we ate lamb and drank port wine so maybe that's a clue a glass of wine port and i remember my dad liked port he he, he wasn't like a drinker drinker but he loved port and we always had it in the house um, there are a lot of things that uh, we have to uh, think about the churches believe that healing comes from touching and loving. We have to be able to touch. It's like when our children have a boo-boo, we say a little Spanish, a little uh, whimsical kind of, of uh, saying. We say, sana, sana, colita de rana, ya si no sana, mana, sana, mariana. And it's real cute. And you give them a kiss and patch up their boo-boo and they go away. That's love. That's love. Every father and mother does that. And um, I, I remember it sure worked for me. You know, I had, I was a kid that was always in trees and things. And so I had a lot of boo-boo. So they did sana sana colita de rana for me. And it literally means, uh, well, I think you have an interpreter. But loving at this time, and keep busy, get creative. I get crazy with cre creativity. As a matter of fact, on the table here, I have plant life in things. Here's the flax or lean set we talked about. I make an eye pouch with it. You put it in the freezer to relax your eyes. I take the leftover pulp from the apples and add spices and create a pomodoro. They smell wonderful. And you can hang it on a tree or put it on, uh, and it doesn't take anything. I teach children to do this. Um, you can get busy and make dram out of the chumpets or the rose hips. And rose hips are very important because they're full of vitamin C. The best rose hips grew in Russia. And when they had that terrible Chernobyl blacks there, 
it ruined the crops. I encourage farmers to be growing rose hips. And this year I have been to four areas where I picked and because we had no rain, they're going to be very scant. So if you find them, get them, freeze them, wash them, freeze them, or dry them. But if you dry them, you can use them for tea. They've even in the past would crush them up and uh, put uh, honey, and a lot of times would spread it on a piece of bread to eat. Uh, it's very high in vitamin C. Uh, in our area, we have uh, nutritious wild uh, things that we can eat. And we can get a good lesson from looking into books, uh, the native juice, and they survive very well. This uh, Michael Moore actually did a study from New Mexico right here in San Luis. He started here and he got a lot of his information from uh, San Luis people. The first book was called Remedios de la Gente. And he didn't know enough Spanish to interpret. But later, this, these books are awesome. And they'll teach you a lot. Um, we have uh, Yarrow, an abundance of Yarrow also, which is a good cough infection. It's used for wounds. You can wash with it. Um, uh, and another thing, we don't have lemons a lot, but lemon juice also is used a lot as a good remedy for cataro or cox uh, it, with honey. Um, I often, because I talk a lot, will make a, a mixture of lemon and honey and I just sip on it during the day. And um, there's also... Um, the rose hip that you could um, make like a little syrup from to do the same thing. The choke cherry not only made jelly and other things, but it was a remedio. Uh, a lot of times a midwife carried them in her little pouch when she went to uh, birth the baby, and she made her a tea to help the mother re relax, but also gave a cup to the husband so he would be calm. And um, like barambuyo or um, barambuyo is a little wild currant. And there aren't too many this year. I make excellent jelly with it. But this also was what they used to boil and give a tea to the birthing mother to release the placenta. So again, we have a lot of vitamin C. So, there are just so many things that I could tell you any one thing. We must look to our remedy in what will is good for your body. Some people can't take cayenne, and they're excellent. Chili peppers are good. But then you have to look to what is going to be good for you. And, um, and every woman should be doing this, pick up her books and learn from them. And, um, or here's my little mouse. Uh, I like to make a catnip mouse for the toy. And I've actually written a story about El Rey Raton, the tan mouse, which I'm going to publish. And um, this is the catnip tincture. So when I make the toy, I sold these by hand. And I put the the catnip on the cotton I put in there. And then the kitty has a ball with the catnip. But catnip is a good tea. That it was the tea of England. And Marco Polo, when he started bringing uh, different um, teas from the Asia, the English forgot about catnip. And catnip is good for elderly, for children, and it works different for a human being than a cat. If, the, when, if you drink a cup of tea, you're not going to be like Kitty going all over the place. It, you, it's going to calm you. And I often recommend that like lemon balm. And uh, so those are not traditional herbs, but we can reach to knowledge we have now. Every library now is really getting herb books, and that's what I would recommend, because no one herb uh, might work for one person, 
uh, you need to kind of look into that uh, yourself. Um, also, we talked a little bit last time uh, about some of the herbs we had here. Um, the uh, fun things, uh, well, for instance, uh, what I call the last rose of summer, it's called potpourri. And potpourri is like, what, uh, I have a basket over here, and if I eat a knife sword, I wash, I peel it, I put it in there to dry. An apple that, that I slice up, or flowers that are getting uh, bad. And eventually you have something, a nice little gift to give someone. I actually make it for a church store. I make jam for the church store. Every kind of wild jam that sells amazingly. Uh, then you would use essential oil and always use pure essential oil like lavender. Lavender and Usema was used the the um, for um, like for instance for the um, the baby when they have colic they made a, a tea and would give the baby. But I we sell pure lavender oil at, at the church shop and little bottles and I tell people if they're nervous put it on the nape of the neck know certain spots and it helps you relax it helps with headaches um, rosemary tea is very cleansing as you said in the last video and um, also uh, we had uh, the like the rose hips um, also it could be done in crafting and uh, one of the things uh, I taught children so they'd go home um, with something they could remember. We made a little magnet. It could be a little shell or a little bottle top, but I let the kids pick what they want. Like, oh, that's a roll sip. And they would tell their mom, you can make jelly with that, and it's good for a cold. So it was a lesson. Uh, another thing, since I worked with mental health seven years, I was used to working with a different population of people that had problems. Uh, children would react, and I bought these little Guatemalan dolls, of which I gave the kids, and I said, I gave them names, okay, Jose will take care of you. Jose loves you. And the kids would put them in, and then they put the herbs they selected, and they took it home to mother and gave mother a lesson. So I love teaching children because they're so open to knowledge, most of them. And especially if you make it fun. You know, you have to really get into it. Um, and I think that's what we need to be doing. Calm yourself in this time because take a good herbal bath and I used to make an awesome herbal bath with about 20 different herbs that are wild and they're all skin related and then I have other ingredients that comes from the kitchen and uh, it was a, another thing that helped people relax if you put it in a little bag put it soak your feet if you didn't have time for a bath but at this time, number one, we have to keep our senses, keep your mind clear, keep your body clean. And I mean inside and out. So those are the things I would offer, but look to your books, look up what would work for me. So, um, and for me, thank you for the flowers. That brightened my day. I love flowers. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, I was going to go to Alamosa today, tomorrow, and get flowers because I like to have all over the house. And um, so when I'm not doing other things, I like to cook, but I try to cook unusual, I do great stir fries. I use every vegetable I can find. And um, some of the things I'm doing right now, I'm painting rocks. And I think uh, you got to see my bear. I think that was pretty good. I'm not an artist, 
but I, I have had more fun. And uh, this uh, is like I painted the Osaka plant, but um, just recently I did one rock that looked just like my daughter. It just kind of reminded me of her. Uh, and because um, I want you to remember that in picking, and I take people on herbal walks, and that's what I teach. Respect the plant. Don't uproot everything and take more than you need. We have to be careful of greed. Greed with everything, especially in this time. Take, if you take a plant, plant it, and that way you'll have it forever. But I have a poem that I wrote in Pennsylvania. I was invited to an environmental conference in Pennsylvania State University about in 1999, I think it was. And I was so moved with what they were saying about the earth. We're not taking care of it. And, uh, and my Spanish, like I said, I was a Latin Latina because when I moved from California, I could hardly speak Spanish because we didn't get to speak there. So uh, I did write it in Spanish, but I think you can understand it good. And it's called uh, Llora. La voz de la tierra llora. A la gente de todo el mundo. Mírame, cuídame, respétame, guárdame. Amame, yo te doy la vida. Con su llanto le abro mi corazón, escuchando el mureo de la vida. Conozco a la voz de la tierra, que me da en abundancia vida y me calma el alma. Teresa. We would like to thank our special guest speaker, Teresa. Oh my gosh, she was so adorable. And thank all our viewers. We hope that you have enjoyed our presentation. We would like to thank LCFC staff for all their amazing support and work pre-event today. Special thanks to Katie, Katie Medina for her production of Teresa's video and her amazing support. Special thanks to Las Mujeres Valientes Fellows, Next 50 Initiative, Excel Energy, and Alpine Bank. A copy of Teresa's Hispanic Native American European Uses of Herbal Medicines will be in your post-event email as our gift to you. That concludes our presentation. We hope that you have enjoyed it and gain some wisdom from Teresa. Hasta. Hasta la vida.